Welcome back to our channel. We're here in Southern California. We're doing a beautiful video today. I met John from Thirsty Reef um, last month in New York and Reef Appaloosa. He was hanging out with one of our customers, Ivan. And I got to meet him and he told me, hey dude, I heard you're coming to Reef Appaloosa in California next month. Why don't you come to my house, check it out. I got a bunch of acros, so we just arrived here. Let's go inside, let's go check it out. Throughout this video, don't forget, we're gonna be hiding an egg of Casper. First two people to post a comment here on YouTube. First two people to post a comment. We'll send you a t-shirt and a swag pack right to your door, as long as you're within the United States. All right, guys, we just got here to John's house. John, how are you, buddy? Good, how are you? Nice to meet you, nice to see you again. Thank you for inviting us over, man. I really appreciate it. So we're here, this is a basement where we're in right now? Yeah, it's like a walkout basement. It walks out to my backyard, but it's uh, under my house. All right, yeah, cool. Yeah. So let's check out this thing. Uh, let's just start with the first thing. This thing is loaded, loaded with agroforest. Beautiful agros, the man is killing it. He's got a huge variety. They look very, very well kept. So this used to be a display tank, right? Yeah, I mean, when I first set it up, I set up all the rock. I spent a ton of time making floating shelves. That's all underneath now. But as I got more coral, I'm like, hey, you know, if I need to get the corals out and they're all encrusted, I can't do it, you know? It becomes a problem. Yeah, you're bound to get pests sometimes. Yeah. You need to dip all your corals. It's impossible. You, you can get the whole thing on, just figure out how to do piece by piece. Yeah, I had to do that before. I, I bought some coral from a well-known vendor a year and a half ago. Yeah. And ended up getting flat ones. Oh, wow. So, Stressful. yeah, I had to take every single rack out for two months. Every week, I took it out to dip. So that made you get to the point where you say, no longer at this place, let me go into the rack so can, I can now yeah, dip yeah. them if I were to encounter a similar situation to it. Exactly. It makes sense, man. Yeah, yeah. So how long have you been in the hobby? My brother got me into the hobby. So okay. 1992. Okay. That's when he started getting into the hobby. Um, you know, he got into an accident. In 95, he passed away. I was 15 oh, at the time. I was 15. And it was kind of my duty to continue, to continue it. The hobby. I was 15 years old. 1995, we're doing like Aqua Sea Remorse Skimmer. Yeah, I, we're doing, I, I know those skimmers, trust me. Yeah, we're doing VHR. Maxi Jets, Power Heads. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, I just kind of kept doing it throughout college, but you know, after college I moved a lot. Yeah. Every time you move, like half the things die. So finally when I settled in here in 2017, you know, I got this tank built up. That's when I really was able to kind of get settled in and let things grow and, and do what I want to do with it. Who built this tank? Uh, AGE in Texas. Okay, oh, that built great tanks. Yeah. And how long, uh, what's the size and dimensions of the tank? It's uh, 10 feet long, Okay. 4 feet front to back, and 30 inches tall. Oh, similar to my old 900 gallon tank, so it's what, about 800 and a gallons? Little, small, uh, a little brother, like, yeah. So little 500? 750 or so. Big enough. I yeah. love it, man, I love it. And uh, before we dive into all your livestock and stuff like that, um, I want to ask you a couple different questions regarding your fish. Yeah. Uh, well, that is kind of technical lifestyle, but before <laughs> we jump into the course, which is what we're here for, I want to see some of the fish. What kind of fish do you keep in here? I see a lot of tanks. Yeah, they're mostly worker fish, you know. Uh, I've always liked the black tanks, so I actually have three of them. Well, you uh, know, I've never seen someone have more than one tank, especially in a tank this size. Yeah, and there's like five or six yellow tanks. Okay, that I've seen. Black tanks, they get along well, no issues? They bicker a little bit, but the Achilles is the, the most dominant one. They sort of keep them in check. So I have a regular Achilles and a hybrid Achilles. Okay. Uh, so, so, yeah. So Achilles, hybrid Achilles, I, I see a Selfin, the Lamingi, a Regal Tang, Blonde Nasal, okay. uh, Powder Blue, which is like, it's incredible that the Achilles is not messing with them. Yeah, no, they, I used to have three Powder Blues. I used to have three Achilles too. One got, they basically like, Fight, kill each other off, and then yeah, it's not very easy. Yeah, yeah, and then, um, yeah, and a bunch of clowns too that are just like hidden. Is the line in maroon messes with you? Hmm? The, the maroon? Yeah. Oh uh, no, they actually don't. I mean, I guess it's big enough where they, because I know in a little tank when I stick my hand in, they will mess. They with will. You. They bit me. Around, I, I believe, but I guess in this tank, it's big enough where they can leave me alone. I see. I also see a couple of rasses. I see a fox face in here. I see a couple of damsels over there, am I right? Yeah, there's some damsels. Anything else that I'm not missing in there? Pretty much, oh, and a white tail, like uh So basically, you're like me, you like tanks. I like worker fish, I need them to eat the algae. And poop. You know. Yeah, and poop. feed the corals. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Cool. Exactly. 
Any critters you keep in there other than the average snails? Do you keep any critters? Um, I mean, there's, there's a few snails, but not, not, not too mentioned. much. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah, and pretty... let's talk a little bit about corals. This tank, I would say, is 80% SPS dominated. When I mean SPS, it's all about the Acroporus. Uh, they're beautiful, by the way. How many different types do you think you have in here? 100, 150? Yeah, it's pretty hard to keep count. Probably north of 100, yeah. Yeah, like especially like the purple monster, I rarely yeah. sell that. I mean, I, right I lost now, mine recently. Yeah. I lost mine maybe a year ago. I mean, it's 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 getting to the point where it's hard to find it. A lot of people keep losing it. So I feel like it's one of my kind of challenges and almost duties to keep it. So keep make sure that it's getting passed around because then yeah. it dies and then the lineage of the coral won't be around anymore. Another yeah. Terry coral. Another Terry coral. Yeah, yeah. yeah Steve yeah. Terry's been doing this for a long time. I, I, I still he's still around doing it. If Therese is still watching, what's up, buddy? <laughs> so, anyhow, tons of acroporas. I see some mushrooms, couple multiporas. You got some beautiful torches. You say you bought one of these a few years back and you've been growing them? Yeah, I mean, I've been, I always collect them. So, the, the CC24 cash just got last year. But the, the original ASD, you know, uh, Holy Grail, yeah. which, you know, a lot of wild ones looks just about the same. But yes. this one's actually from 2015, I think, is when. ASD got a batch in and it's yes. nice and... So it's actually, it's, it's well known, it's, that specific specimen is known to grow well in the aquarium because it's been around so long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, a lot of people don't understand wild versus aquaculture, what a difference it makes. Once the coral has been in aquaculture and you're into generation second, third, and fifth, and tenth, that coral is bulletproof. That coral actually wants the home aquarium more than the ocean, I'm pretty sure. I don't know that we have tried that, but I think that will be the case, you know? So it's, it's true, because even, I've been trying to keep speciosas, right? Yeah. So these are conditioned to my tank now. I've actually tried to buy some recent wild ones. I put it in here. It's not that I, easy. Yeah. It takes time to get them to, to yeah, and and have our time to keep them alive. And you know, all these corals are really old now. These, these are, I probably cut, like frags I cut are many, many generations old. So when I ship it, even if it's delayed a day, like they half might. the time they're still alive. Yeah, funny you say that. Uh, we have a couple stories. Actually, uh, about five, six years ago, a package got delivered back to a store. It got lost. Uh -huh. Delivered to a customer. He came back to a store, undelivered, unopened, 11 days later. Oh, wow. And there was a Cyphetra in there alive, and there was a green Humulus Acropora. Oh, okay. Alive. That's crazy. 11 days later. Wow. True story. We, <laughs> we were like, we were all opening the box to see how bad everything was going to be inside the box. And when we opened it, that thing is alive. We couldn't believe it. Yeah. We used to be like, oh, this is the best coral ever. We got to go forever. <laughs> and then he got stung by a coral like three months later. Oh, no. I swear. <laughs> Something silly like that. But anyhow, you were mentioning a couple cool agros. Normally, I go to places and I got most of the stuff. I see a couple agros that you have in here that I want. So I'm going to put a, an order together with you. <laughs> okay. So since I'm talking about putting an order together with you, how can people get a hold of your corals? You know, I'm on Instagram a lot. Okay. Um, What's your Instagram? Uh, Thirsty's Reef. All right, we're gonna post it down below so you guys can see it. Yeah, and I I have a website, but you know, you know. So I, they can send you a DM on Instagram. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Okay. Lately, I've been doing a lot of eBay. eBay okay. is like eBay? does it? eBay sort of like nobody really uses eBay, but I'm trying to make make we'll eBay. eBay. Come, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We've so, been for a long time. eBay Everywhere. is kind of difficult for somebody new because you don't have enough following, you know. No. Like, not enough people biz. I was like, oh, it's a waste of time to do. So go help them now. Go check them out on eBay. Get some deals. You snipers, pay attention. Go snipe <laughs> some nice acros in there. Last minute snipe. No software use, please. <laughs> you got to keep it fair for everyone. So yeah, we're going to be placing an order on that. So we talked about your pros. We talked about your fish. Let's talk about a little bit about your equipment. You mentioned to me that I've been doing videos lately and I mentioned some people for being meticulous. You said to me that you're not <laughs> meticulous, but you know what? I don't mind. Seriously, if everyone was the same way, we were, we, we were all, we want different things in reefing, right? And to me, if you're gonna keep your sound fantastic and everything neat, kudos to you. But I think ultimately the concentration should be what the animals, the, the water quality and then what you're giving to the animals. That should be secondary. So to me, as long as you got the right equipment and the animals are happy, the rest who cares. Yeah, that's kind of where I spend all my attention to, you know, every night I have a flashlight. I'm just looking at all the pieces, see how they look. Because it's, you know, I don't have a part meter because I feel like you, you, I, I just you, observe you, and I kind of get an idea of what's happening. And if something looks stressed out, then that's all how I know. That's a good reefer right there. 
Most good reefers don't need a power meter. Good, most good reefers don't even test their water often. You know how you test your tank? You don't have a lot of nitrates, your phosphates are pretty good. Why, why am I saying that? The colors, look at the growth, look at the corals on the floor, corals in the back. You guys, you guys haven't got a chance, but I'm gonna show you guys <laughs> in the back. If Jimmy can, Jimmy, right? You paying attention, Jimmy? There you go, he is. <laughs> We're gonna show you in the back, there's corals growing on the floor, there's corals growing in, in the glass, like against the wall. So when you see those signs, that tells you the tank is doing great. So let's say you walked in another day in those mushrooms, the little loose of the glass, what is that telling you? Something's off, right? Yeah. So then you're gonna go check it. That's why he says at night, he checks with his flashlight, you're checking for polyp extension. It's one of the corals receding, or a coral that it was opening tremendously over the past four weeks, now it's no longer open. Yeah. Is it getting yeah. stung, or do we have red balls? We have black balls, we have flat worms, even whatever the case may be. So yeah, kudos to you for that. So equipment. I see you running radio lights, Gen 5. I have six. a mix of Gen 4s. Gen 4s? And Gen 5s. Gen 4 and Gen 5s. Okay. Radio are expensive, you know. Actually this tank, when I first set it up, for eight months it was just water, rock, and fish. I couldn't afford to buy all the equipment I need, right? But isn't it good that we don't have to replace balls like the T5s and the metal highlights? Yeah, but I'm an old school reefer. I still got halides. These are halides right here, okay. Dad. I, they're How do you deal one. with the heat? I have fans, fans and AC, and it's a basement, so it keeps it cooler. It so I actually don't even use chiller. I just use fans to cool it. Even even here during the, the summer? Yeah, when it's 100 degrees outside. You guys been having a hot summer this year, Yeah, right? yeah. And I keep the water like at between 79 and 81. Okay. Like fans evaporation because we're in low humidity gotcha. does wonders, you know. Radio lights, you have metal highlights 400 watts you mentioned? Yes, I got 15 radions around okay. and then there are three 400 watt radium uh, bulb. 250, 400 Okay, <clears throat> what, what uh, balance are you using? I am using the PFO, uh, PFO. M80s. Okay, yeah. and uh, what, what bulbs are you using? The, the radiums. Uh, uh, you still find replacements? I mean, I like... I probably have like 50 bulbs scored up that I, you know, whatever That's they have. That's what they all say, <laughs> man. This is hilarious. What do you find them? You can you find them in the like, There are times where like Hamilton, Hamilton was one of the distributors, I think. And Hamilton is near here. Yeah, but when was that last? Last, last time, time I bought, time. I bought like 30 bulbs maybe a year ago. A year ago, interesting. Yeah, a year ago, they're still available. They're going to be worth gold one day. Yeah, I'm actually trying mm -hmm. to like, oh man, maybe so I should. Like silver, up, gold, like, watches, sports cars. Metal highlight bulbs, a <laughs> little bit of everything. Yeah, because like for me, you know, what I wanted to do was like, you know, I don't want my coral to look just the same as everybody's. Like gotcha. some of my corals grow really thick, I think, because they're getting so much par. Gotcha. I mean, I have just in a four by four area, there's four radions. I oh, you're black radions. I can only imagine. And, <clears throat> and the halide. So, you know, I like to try to do something to make the coral extra healthy, grow. And you have a couple of kessels here. Oh, we have some kessels. Too. What is that for? It was a little dark in this area because you know I had the fans there. This so. is a little dark. <laughs> but I added some extra lights. I mean, this these two used to not be here, but I noticed that you know because the how lights were not penetrating like enough in certain areas, so I added some more radion. Okay. So real quick, so we can run through this protein skimmer. What do you use? I use a, a Bubble King. Okay, yeah. internal or external? Internal. Okay, any UV sterilizer? So I have a RK2 150 watt. There are times where I'm like, oh, you know, I don't want to kill the bacteria with the UV. So you but don't I, run it 24-7? Now I do, because there are times where I just have random, like, RTN on one random piece. And then, so I feel like maybe sometimes the bacteria, bad bacteria could grow too much. So I now just leave gotcha. the UV on 24-7 and everything looks good, so I just okay. now I leave it on. Any refugiums or anything like yeah, that? Yeah, I'm mean, gonna get a refugium right down here. Uh, okay. Just some Kato. I mean, I kind of just let it grow, whatever. I harvest it once in a while. I also okay. actually run an algae scrubber. Okay. Uh, because this tank was ran maybe it's 2017 to 2020. It was three years. I, I, I don't have, I don't use filter soft. I don't do anything to remove the detritus. I mean, yeah. just built up, so. This tank is basically just a bunch of fertilizer that is down there. Yeah. Well, my PL4 was always around like 0.4. Okay. Which, you know, corals are still happy, but, you know, everybody's like, oh, what's so high? Your corals probably don't, I'm like, it looks, so I've been lowering it slowly now. It's like, I run it between 0.1 and 0.2. Yeah. Just, you know, 
Yeah. So where's all of your numbers? Let's say... The so nitrate, I keep it around between like 10 to 30. Okay. Phosphate, 0.1 to 0.2. And, you know, I was just actually talking to a vendor today about... <laughs> he, he was asking about my parameters and I told him, you know, there's a range that the main parameter needs to be in, but I've had times where those parameters are exactly the same as now. But back then, my corals didn't have good color, they hardly grew. So oh yeah. To me, like, it's like everything beyond that. You need some positives and nitrous for sure. Yeah, so as long as you have those, it's actually, I mean, um, the, over the last two years, I really started to do more trace element dosing, bacteria dosing. Yeah. And I think that's really what has helped me, you know, get these things to grow faster and better. Gotcha. Yeah. You're doing any phyto, any oyster eggs, any amino you know, acids, I, iodine? I used to do amino acids. I used to do a lot of, uh, you know, uh, dosing, all these things. And then I come to realization that none of those stuff has been healthy. So I don't do okay. any amino acids. I used to do a lot of uh, like flatworm stop, you know, core boost. So they're like, oh, that'll help you core grow faster. Yeah. But I just, once in a while, if you have a little bit of bad bacteria, those things like fuel your bad bacteria. They'll just like kill a column. But That's I stopped cool. doing all of that. I threw away all my like, uh, all, my, all my aminos and stuff like that. So what do you feed? I feed bacteria. What I'm saying, what do you feed in general? You feed frozen food, pellet? Oh, food, I, I food, feed pellet and nori. Okay. And then once in a while, I'll do, I'll do some frozens. But right. yeah, I try to keep the feeding as little work as possible. So they're on an auto feeder for the, for the fish. Gotcha. What about flow on a tank this big? How do you deal with it? I see you got some tonsies here. Yeah, so I got uh, six tonsies. Well, actually, seven tonsies, 6105s. How much water do they move each? They do a 3,000. 3,000? So you got six more than 3,000 gallons. Yeah. And then I see in the bag you have a Hydro Wizard. Yes, yeah, so I have a Hydro Wizard 63. That's like the that. 12, 13,000. Yeah. That's no, so actually almost 16,000 gallons. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That, that thing, you know, because I used to do like MP60s and stuff. Oh, it's a big difference. Yeah. MP60 is great, but for a tank this big, it does almost. And I think the key, it feel like it you can see my uh, Tunsies are on uh, sea swirls. Yes. So I, I have flow. found that that random flow helps randomly. Yeah, because in, in my other tanks, I have a you know I have a gyre, and a different tank has the, the sea swirls. Yeah. And the one with the sea swirls, like the color just looks so much better for it. more random. They get washed more. Versus, yeah. I got you. Yeah, so I'm, I'm old school in a lot of ways. Like who yeah. uses sea swirls anymore? Yeah, yeah. you'd be surprised. We go to some houses. And now with these stores, I'm sure you've been watching them. You get to see people still use metal highlights. See, so some people stick to their own methods and they don't want to change, you know? Yeah. I yeah. don't blame them. Yeah. So what else do you have in here that we can check out? So this is my main tank and then okay. what I usually do is I grow pieces out here. Because I run out of space, I do a lot of fragging, so I set up okay. a frag tank on the other side of this room. Okay. Um, Let's check it out. this system will you say that you do it basically what you do over there same parameters yes there's no this uh pretty much the same this tank does not have uv so it seems like it's okay i was thinking about installing uv but for now yeah it's been okay are those sunburst nems over there yeah the colorado sunburst um john Thank you for inviting us over, bro. We appreciate it. Thank you for I can wait to receive my box next week. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Again, don't forget to show him some support. Go check out his Instagram. Send him some DMs if you guys want some hot acros. Yeah. Again, guys, thank you for watching. Stay tuned. We're going to be doing a lot more videos while we're here in Southern California. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Give us a like. Post some comments below. We'll see you guys soon.